cleaned up here day two with the King Song 18XL. It wouldn't be an official, uh, officially certified stuff that you see if it didn't go on a Dunkin' Donuts ride, so that's what we're doing. I did actually bring my uh, GPS with today so I can uh, more easily monitor my real-time speed. Holy headwind, Batman! Really strong. I feel like I'm plowing snow. This is a very, very strong headwind. It's funny, I just stopped for a second to um, check the, uh, the pedal uh, calibration felt like I had a little bit of an up tilt on me but it actually it looked okay but then when I started riding again I heard this like it sounded like a, a buzzing or a rubbing noise I'm like oh shit what happened and I look up and someone's flying a drone they, they were uh, flying a drone uh, overhead so yeah those damn drone pilots you know they're reckless they're crazy comfortably at 23 even with this headwind so the, the road turns a little bit up ahead so I'm looking forward to that should be uh, less in my face this is pretty miserable this is just too much wind about 24 25 now still got a lot of wind except it's hitting me kind of at an angle instead of head on but not great I, I should be able to carry really good speed on the way but whoa really good speed on the way back though that was the remains of a roadkill dead baby gator Back to the wind right in my face. It sucks. This is about as bad as I've uh, ridden in wind wise. It's really, really bad. I'm not sure why, but my right knee is really painful today. I, uh, I ran on Friday night. Felt okay, not terrible. But right now, this is, uh, this is not comfortable at all. I find myself shifting my weight to my left leg a little bit. I just just touched 27 miles an hour trucking along you know what I realized that yesterday in the video I don't know that I specifically mentioned even though you saw the e-wheels watermark throughout most of the video that the uh, 18XL demo came from uh, Jason and e-wheels and I wanted to thank him for including me in the uh, test, the uh, test across America uh, event that we're doing again. So yeah, thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Although you already know that. Thankfully, we are now off of uh, the Mockery Road. So yesterday, I had something very upsetting and sad happen. And I didn't talk about it in the video yesterday. I wanted to make the video more about the wheels, so well, let me let me tell you about it now. So on the weekends, usually I'm the one that gets up first and uh, goes out and does the uh, the cleanup on the chicken coop. You know, every every morning we clean up the chicken coop. So I went out there yesterday morning, just like I always do, and started started uh, doing my stuff. You know, one of the things I do is I, I put their food down. I get some scratch grains and spread them around the the um, their area. And uh, I'm just I'm looking around, and all of a sudden I I notice that I don't see Steffi, uh, who happens to be my favorite hen. I, I don't see Steffi. She's usually close by when I'm uh, doing my stuff in the morning. So I don't think anything of it at first. I'm like, okay, well maybe she's in the back, or sometimes they go you know underneath the platform that we have the coop built on. You like to hang out, hang out there. I figured, okay, well maybe she's 
Maybe she's there, I guess, no big deal. I continued on my way. And But usually when she hears my voice, she, she will come out wherever she is. So uh, I, I kept uh, doing my, my cleanup for a little bit. So after a couple more minutes, I, I still don't see her anywhere. And I'm like, well, that's strange. You know, everyone else is there. All the other chickens are there. And Steffi, who is always close to me, is not. So uh, I start looking around. I, I go behind the coop, look around. Maybe she's in the back. No, nope, don't see her. So then I, I get down on my knees and I look underneath the coop at that area to see if maybe she's just nestled up in there. So I look under there and I don't see her. Then I start to get worried because it, that's very strange. I, I, I was, I'm not the type to overreact to things, but at that moment, that is when I became concerned. So now I do another lap around the chicken area at a much faster pace, hoping that I just overlooked her somehow. Look around everywhere, everywhere she could possibly be, inside the coop, outside the coop, she's not there. So now I go inside and I tell Cindy, I said, I can't find Steffi. I asked her if she, she uh, Cindy put the, the chickens to bed the night before. I said, but Steffi was there when you put her to bed. Yes, yes, she was there. And Cindy said that she swore that she saw Steffi walking outside uh, yesterday morning when she first got up. I, ha I have a setup where I have a second automatic chicken door on the run. So that opens about 6.30. So the chickens are able to not only come out of the coop, but they're able to come out of their run early. And it sounded like from what Cindy told me that Steffi was out. She was out early. She normally is because the other chickens pick on her. So she's she's mostly mostly a loner. So Cindy says she thought that she saw her walking the yard when she got up. So what didn't make sense was, I mean, I was out there to clean. It could have been more than a five or ten minute difference between what Cindy supposedly saw Steffi and I was out there. It didn't make any sense. So now, of course, Cindy's freaking out and she goes out there, looks for Steffi. She can't find her. While she's out there, I am I am trying to access the security DVR that I installed. Um, we had a security DVR out there. We once had a chicken that was taken by a coyote and I, I expanded it to eight cameras, uh, you know, recording motion 24-7. So I got on my computer and tried to start pulling up the footage to see if I could find out what the hell happened. So of course, with my luck, there was some sort of issue and the DVR had not been recording for a period of a few weeks. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why, it seemed like it, it got full and it didn't delete the oldest videos like it's supposed to. So I had no footage uh, of what was going on out there. So at this point, we're both very distraught. We walk not only the chicken area, but we walk the entire property, you know, the big outer uh, border of the property, the fence line there, looking for signs of something. Like when, when we lost a chicken to a coyote, now there was a big pile of feathers near the coop, and then you could see a, a, a very clear trail leading out to the fence line where the coyote jumped over the fence with a chicken in its mouth and, and, and took off. I saw absolutely nothing anywhere uh, that would indicate that there was any sort of attack, any sort of problem, any sort of struggle. Not a feather, no blood, nothing. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. And, and, and it, it's tougher not knowing what the hell happened. You know, because now, of course, we're concerned about the safety of the other chickens. And Steffi was very feisty, very elusive, very fast. So I just, I don't think she'd be easy to catch, but it, I, I just can't believe that some, something got her, left no signs of struggle, and exited the, the property without a trace. It just, it just blew my mind. I talked to my neighbor who has, you know, she's had chickens and they've had issues with predators. And uh, her guess was that it could have been a cat. Bobcat, panther, she said that they, they are extremely fast, can jump extremely high, and it's quite possible they, they came in lightning fast, snatched her, took off, and just there, there were no signs. 
The other possibility is maybe it was a, a bird, like a hawk. I guess a hawk or an owl, but it's unlikely. I mean, a, a hawk would not be able to carry a full-size chicken for any appreciable distance. And uh, you would see, you would see um, some sort of symptoms on the ground, for sure. There, there would be some, some sort of uh, signs there, and, and there definitely were not. So anyways, it broke my heart. Like I said, she was, she was, um, you know, the, the, my favorite hen. She knew her name. She would, she would come when she was called. You know, I just, uh, never thought you'd get so emotionally attached to chickens. So anyways, um, what I've done now is, is for the time being, I've disabled that door that allows them to get to the outside. So, uh, they, they will not be able to get outside until one of us lets them out. You know, because basically that, that period of time from when the door opened to when we went out was when whatever happened, happened. Oh yeah, chicken stories. It's just, uh, I feel so bad. And just having her disappear like that with, with no idea what happened, it's, it's really, it's really difficult. I did fix the DVR, it is now recording again, thank goodness. I did watch some video from last night to see if I could see if anything returned. Looking for round two, I did not see anything. But uh, yeah, I, my guard will be up for sure. So I apologize for those of you that don't give two shits about chicken stories, but yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put a, uh, a note in there if you don't want to hear chicken story, you can uh, skip ahead a couple minutes. Alright, 18L officially, or 18XL can officially uh, get Duncan Jones coffee with the best of them. Definitely still a big fan of these pedals. Uh, you know, after the 10 miles, oh, it was, it was a little over 10 miles, like 10.28 miles according to my, according to my GPS. And the, uh, the, bot, the battery on the XL was reading 83% after a little more than 10 miles. And keep in mind that was going against a pretty ferocious headwind almost the entire way. It's funny, um, a lot of people have been, uh, I, the, the video from yesterday was well received, but it's funny, I, I've been getting a lot of comments uh, regarding the scooter and how people, I guess some people, like me, I mean, I didn't know much about scooters uh, a few months ago, but people are just really surprised at just how capable those things are. I mean, they are beasts. The, um, the Dualtron uh, 2EX Limited, I believe that's the full name of the one that I have, that's actually kind of the base model from the Dualtron line, the dual motor uh, Dualtrons. You can get much, much, much more aggressive with uh, stronger batteries, stronger motors, you know, 55 miles an hour. It's just, it's insane. But yeah, it's, it's a whole different world. It really is. When you compare a scooter to an EUC, a high-level EUC, you know, there's there's some distinct advantages that, and disadvantages, but there's some distinct advantages with a scooter. As you saw yesterday, they're fast, very fast. The one I have will top out about uh, 40 miles an hour um, to get good range. I was getting very similar range uh, with the uh, the Dualtron as I did on the 18XL. A scooter obviously has two wheels so uh, it's I would say it's safer unlike a one wheel or an EUC if uh, you have a failure you're going down if you have a, a electrical or mechanical failure you're going down when you only have one wheel on the uh, scooters you could have a failure and you will just uh, safely roll to a stop another really attractive thing for most people with the scooter is there's next to no learning curve to ride it you know it, it takes you know all of five minutes to just get a feel for how to balance if you can ride a bike you can ride a scooter uh, whereas an EUC depending on the person can have a very very steep learning curve like me but now on the flip side that's also could be viewed as something that's uh, cool about an EUC not not anyone can do it uh, when people see you riding by, the vast majority are going to think that you're a wizard. They have no idea how you can do such a thing. So uh, that's that's a that's a that's a pro and a con in an EUC. 
Now, you know, like riding an EUC, learning to ride an EUC takes a special type of person. It's not an instant gratification sort of thing. So, I mean, you have to have some determination and some physical skills, obviously, to be able to, uh, to ride one. So, it's a big plus in my book. When it comes to commuting, like if, if you're in a situation where you could ride a bike to your work or wherever you're going, a scooter is a, is a great choice. You know, because you, you're going to have more speed and uh, the same sort of restrictions as you would with a bike. With an EUC, uh, you do have some added flexibility when you're using it as a commuter because you can uh, more easily you know, uh, trolley it on, on a sidewalk or take it on the train with you, something like that. So, there's again, there's some pros and cons both ways, depending on what kind of commuting that you're doing. And of course, when it comes to handling off-road terrain, an EUC is going to be uh, far better than a scooter, even though this, those scooters can uh, handle off-road to a degree, or off-off-road terrain to a degree, but not nearly as well as a uh, big-wheeled EUC can. And of course, I would say that riding an EUC, a one-wheel, or an electric skateboard is cooler. I would say cooler than riding a scooter. Although I have seen people do some pretty crazy and aggressive stuff on scooters as well. Um, but so yeah, if that matters to you, uh, I think uh, EUC, one wheel, and electric skateboards all are winners in that category. So anyways, if you saw my most recent videos and you thought that the Dualtron uh, is a cool device, it certainly is. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Cindy loves it. She absolutely loves it. And uh, yeah, not only can you get 18XLs at E-Wheels, but he also sells Dualtron scooters. So check it all out in the link below. Uh, those of you that are curious what's going on with my Monster, I just got my replacement uh, inner tube yesterday. I bought it on Amazon. So I'm not sure about time today or the motivation today, but uh, I do need to rip it apart and, and uh, pull out the tube and see what's going on. Evidently, uh, Monsters don't get flats very often. Should be a good learning experience. I want to lift this thing and I noticed that the lift sensor didn't appear to be working and it's because it's turned off. I'm gonna turn it back on. Let's see if it works. It works. All right, we have... Um, about four miles to go. Almost home. So I won't be holding on to the XL real long. Maybe another day or two. I don't know. You know, since I already have an 18L, it's not like a, I'm not familiar with uh, a lot of uh, the technology in this wheel. And uh, yeah, I, I have a good sense of it. And this actually has performed pretty much as I had hoped. You know, with, with with a few uh, surprises, positive surprises. So if, if you are a potential King Song buyer and you have a choice between an 18L and an 18XL, I'm not sure exactly what the price difference is, $400 maybe. Uh, my reaction would be save up your money and get the 18XL. A little girl in that car that's pulling away, she was uh, had her phone out the window shooting video as she went by. You won't have that happen on a scooter. That's the difference. Okay, as I round this turn here, I should have that horrible, horrible wind at my back. So I'm curious what I can get the speed up to. So far, I've touched 27. That's the, part, that's the fastest I've seen on my GPS. Oh yeah, big difference with a wind to your back. Big difference. All right, I just crossed 28 and I got a, I got a subtle subtle tilt back because I, I think I have the tilt back at 50. I'm not sure what that translates to in MPHs, miles per hour, but uh, yeah, it's got more to give. the home 
home stretch. Okay, so <clears throat> according to the GPS, a total of just my coffee cup. 20.81 miles. Just under 21 miles, and actually probably was 21. Um, because I started the GPS a little bit late, so probably about 21 miles. Let's, let's get rid of this coffee cup. Oh. Stupid coffee cups! Alright, so let's uh let's check the King Song app. Let's just see what we're what we're at statistically on the King Song after nearly 21 miles. Hi hey, baby. Okay. Oh nice. Remaining battery uh, fluctuating between 66 and 67 percent. Not bad. Uh, current wheel temperature 53 degrees Celsius. So it performed well. Yeah, I, I would say I uh, got uh, similar numbers to yesterday and Marty, uh, Marty Back had commented that he was encouraged by those numbers because then he thought that this would be a legitimate 50 mile wheel uh, range wise and I believe that's the case so yeah it's all good. What's this here? Let's go inside and start this roving. Behold the wonders of Christmas behind us. Um, so yeah it's a good ride. Again more of the same, more, more good performance. Um, speed wise I probably average between 22 topped out at slightly over 28 miles an hour at one point. But very solid, very capable. And uh, again, the, the uh, bigger pedals um, definitely postpone the foot pain that I normally would have. So um, you know, by the end of it, I, I could feel it a little bit, but not, not terrible, really not terrible at all. My biggest issue was knee pain today. So that's it for now, I guess. If you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. Um, this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing and uh, feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, and ideas below and thoughts. And that's all I got for you for now. Like I said, I'll, I'll hold on to the 18XL for another couple days and uh, I'd like to get some nighttime riding in actually. That's something that I haven't done on my, on my Z10 review. I don't think I did any really, uh, yeah, I didn't do any nighttime riding. So I want to do that with the XL and uh, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Thanks for coming along. Hope you have a, a good rest of your weekend. And until next time, stuff right now. Here's a pro tip. You want to make sure that you uh, wear your safety equipment. Get your helmet. Put your wrist guards in. Put your elbow pads in. Put your knee guards in. Lock them in. And you got everything you need. Thank <laughs> you.